Welcome. Here. Intro done. <laughs> and are freaking out because they don't know who's on the other side of the door. Why are you here? We told you not to come. And it does not take me long to realize what that wetness is. And it is one of our bucket list goals. Mr. Bouchard and said, heck with the trifold. Some people are very upset that it's called a Mustang. <laughs> You're gonna have to wait and listen. Would you say you have reached stardom yet? So if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed yet, please help me reach my goal. <laughs> Hit subscribe. Thanks. <laughs> that was a little bit of a shameless plug. On to your fun fact. Shameless plug. <laughs> I look like an anglerfish. Yeah, you need a bigger underbite. Oh, I need to get my full angler. need a bigger <laughs> underbite. Let me arrange my spectacles. Oh, you're wearing your spectacles. I am wearing my spectacles. We are... Spectacle together. We're spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back to the Brittany and Brandon show. Or welcome if you're new here. That works. That was better? That was better. I'm glad you approve. Okay. Stamp of approval. Moving on. Welcome. Here. Intro done. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Around here on the Brittany and Brandon show, we are striving to hopefully make you laugh while we remind you that you're not alone on whatever journey you are on, whether it be parenthood, marriage, or just life in general. We do not claim to have everything figured out, but we do claim to be real. Yeah. Real authentic and real fun. I like that too. All right, let's recap our week. We're gonna keep it brief on the recap of the week because there were not a lot of exciting events that occurred. And instead, there was just a week full of sickness. So here's a real brief rundown of how things PG. went. Yeah. Well, it may be a G. Let's keep it G. Let's keep it G, he says. Or Y. What's, is it Y before y? G? I didn't know there was something before G. I think there's G. a Y. Anyway. Maybe. For youth. Oh, yeah, I anyway. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is Y. Y? Maybe. Am I supposed to say that? I don't okay. know if I could say that. <laughs> You can say Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> so, quick recap of the week. Well, let's, let's just throw it back to last week for a second. Eli was sick with the stomach bug last week. That was midweek last week. We talk about that in episode two. Catch that if you're interested. We definitely talk about more than just Eli being sick. So, do catch episode two if you haven't seen it. But, Eli was sick last week. This week, we thought we were in the clear. Monday night rolls around, Colin starts vomiting. So Brandon stays home with him Tuesday and Wednesday. And was it Wednesday morning? Yeah, Wednesday morning, Charlie got sick. And about the time that Charlie got sick, Brandon later told me, not at the time, but later told me he wasn't really feeling great. And so he was going through his own version of this stomach bug as well. And then we are closing out the week and Thursday, Thursday morning at 2 a.m. It was my turn to vomit. So we have all had the stomach bug. It has moved past us. I am just about 36-ish hours out from the onset of my sickness. And I wasn't sure that I, I was going to be up for filming tonight, but I'm just sitting and taking it easy. So we're good. Do you play vacuum in the hole? I did. I know. I had like a little whoosh of energy, a little surge of energy, and I did vacuum because, you know, when when mom goes down, the house kind of falls apart. He does an excellent job keeping the kids alive and the animals alive, and for that I'm very grateful. So I am not throwing him any shade about the house kind of falling apart. If I was the only well one. It still would have fallen apart, so it's okay. <laughs> it's, I'm giving you credit here. So, I did feel like I needed to get some vacuuming in this evening. I did also use our little green Bissell machine on the couch. There were some unappealing substances Rimmits. crusted onto the couch that do not belong on a couch. We'll leave it at that in order to try to keep this G or... Why? Why? So, that was our uh, week in a nutshell. The only evening that I want to spend a little bit of extra time on is Monday night because there's comedy to be had 
in sickness. Somehow it is there and I did find some comedy in the week. So Monday night, this is when Colin ended up getting sick. Let's start kind of at the beginning of the evening when Brandon arrived home. Colin was doing some complaining about his stomach, saying that it really hurt. He's had some gas bubbles recently and they've been right around the 3.30 to 5.30 time frame, those like beginning evening hours. And so my mind just immediately went to, that's Holly giving herself a little scratch if you're wondering what the noise is. We, we have many children, we have many pets. You can still hear us, I'm sure, so excuse the side noise. So, I, my mind just immediately went to, okay, he must have another gas bubble. So we put him in our bed with a warm pad on his belly and we let him be. He's going through whining about it, but we're also getting the other kids fed and Eli ready to go to um, baseball evaluations that are occurring at 6.30. In the midst of all of this, Brandon says, hey, do you mind if a friend comes over to help with an electrical situation in our master bedroom that we're working on. I said, oh sure, that's fine. Forgetting about um, baseball evaluations. When I said that, yeah, that's no problem. A little longer goes by, Colin's steadily complaining about his stomach, but he's having periods where he's not complaining and then he'll have a moment where he really complains. So it's seeming a lot like the gas bubbles that he's had. So my mind is still on, he's got a gas bubble, he just needs to let it pass. And then it comes to me that, hey, Eli has baseball evaluations tonight. So I said, Brandon, you better tell that friend not to come because Eli's got baseball evaluations and the night's going to be busy. So he goes, oh, right, yeah, I forgot about that. I'll let him know. So he texts him and lets him know. That's the end of that. A few minutes later, Colin is really complaining about his stomach at this point. He is now crying. And I am not upstairs when this all goes down. Brandon is... Let me describe to you a little bit about the room that we share with Colin right now. It is Colin's bedroom. We are in there with him because it used to be our bedroom before we turned it into his bedroom because we are working on our master suite. I've talked about that a couple times, but our queen size bed is in there and his toddler bed is in there. And in between these two beds, there's maybe two feet. Not much. Not much space. It's just like kind of a narrow little path and not ideal, but we're making it work. And Colin, he somehow cleared the bed, but it is in this two foot gap. He was standing in the gap. Oh, he was standing, okay. Like I said, I wasn't up there. So he was standing in the gap. And this is where he vomits all of the floor. And much like last week when his brother vomited, it Whatever. is splashy. Yep, splashed on the bedding that Brandon had literally just finished changing and splashed on the bed skirt and on his bed and in various locations. It was a mess. Brandon is yelling for paper towels. He's bringing Colin to the bathroom. I run into the bedroom with the paper towels and Brandon says, get the paper towels on it quick. It's going to drip through the floor. We talked about the floor last time. Yes, Why didn't did. we talk about the floor? That was because Hank was being noisy. So sound and liquid travels to the floor. Indeed it does. So I am now at the moment going, oh my gosh, this is quite accurate. <clears throat> so I'm quickly putting paper towels down, but as we've also talked about, I am not the vomit handler in our house. I struggle with vomit. There are many other areas of parenting where I truly shine. Dealing with vomit is not one of them. So... Brandon is back in the bedroom, working on the vomit now. We've got Colin sitting in the tub. We're close by and we're steadily checking on him. We don't love the idea of having him in the tub without one of us right there, but chaos was unfolding in rapid speed. So we're doing that our very best. It works. And it is about to get worse. You're probably thinking how. Let me tell you how. So Brandon hands me the bed skirt that is all balled up because it is covered in vomit. So I've got it balled up and I'm holding it in one hand so as not to let anything drip from it as I'm rushing it down the stairs, around the corner, to the downstairs bathroom where our washing machine is. That's my goal with this item in my hand. As I'm running down the stairs with this in my hand, I hear a light knock, knock, knock at the door. For whatever reason, my immediate reaction is why in the world is Eli or Charlie outside knocking on the door? 
I don't entirely know why that was my thought, but it was. So I go over there to the door without much thought behind it, and I crack it open because I've got Hank and Holly who heard the knocking and are both now on high alert and are freaking out because they don't know who's on the other side of the door. So I've got this, again, vomit covered bed skirt in hand, crack the door open so the dogs don't get out, and there stands the friend who is coming over to help Brandon with the electrical. And at this point, my immediate reaction that I want to say is, why are you here? We told you not to come. But that would also be very rude, and I do enjoy this person very much. He has been in our lives for a long time. So I then am not really sure what to say. I'm feeling bad that he's here and that I've got this vomit covered thing and that I'm not opening the door more. So I say, are you sure you want to come in? This is a vomit covered piece of our bedding. And he goes, well, you know, I do have help with me and I, I'd really just like to help you with this. So yeah, I'll still come in. And I was like, all right. This is, a, this is an older guy who has two children older than us. Yes, he has four total children, two of which are older than yeah. us. And so, he has six or seven grandchildren now. Yeah. So he's been around the block with all things. <laughs> yeah, he's, he, it wasn't something he hasn't witnessed, I'm sure. Clearly, too, because he handled himself so well during all of this. He handled himself so well. So he says to me, as I'm still standing there with this in my hands, Will the dogs run off if you just let them out? And I said, yep, yeah, they will. So I'm doing this like dance number where I'm like throwing out one leg, throwing out the other leg, trying to keep the dogs. And I'm also holding this. And he goes, okay, I'm gonna go get my tools in the car and give you a second. And I said, okay. So he shuts the door and I now have about 30 seconds to get this vomit covered item into the washing machine and get the dogs into their crates so that I can greet him in a slightly more proper fashion. So I rush about doing this, I tell, Charlie and Eli, who are downstairs, get the dogs in their crate. I rush to the bathroom, I toss it in the washing machine, and I get myself back to the door just as they're closing the crates and as he is returning. And at this time, I open the door and I greet him a little more appropriately. But he enters the home and I pretty quickly have to say, wait, 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 go around. Because at that moment, I am realizing that the floor is wet where he is about to step. And it does not take me long to realize what that wetness is. And I'm sure you are picking up on what it, what it is at this point as well. So I tell him to go around. So he goes around and he goes upstairs to our master bedroom. And he is all the while telling us, it's fine. You take care of what you need to take care of. I will be doing this. You guys do what you need to do. Don't worry about us. He and the friend that he had brought with him. So again, he was so gracious about the situation that he walked into. And I... I'm very thankful for that. So I am now on the floor cleaning up the liquid, cleaning the chair that the liquid is also splashed onto. And then I am standing in the chair cleaning the ceiling where the liquid is steadily beating up. We get the floor, the chair, the ceiling, and the flooring upstairs all cleaned up. Colin is in the tub. The friend is working on the electrical issue. We have a second to take a breath. And that is about the time that I realized it's now 6.35. And Eli needed to be at baseball evaluations at 6.30. And we are about 10 minutes away from the location where he needs to be. So I quickly make a decision. I was not going to be the one to take him to baseball evaluations. I had just envisioned a nice night staying in my home and letting Brandon go about that. Being social is not always at the top of my priority list, slash it's never at the top of my priority list. I'm a little bit of an introvert. I'm a lot of bit of an introvert. Let's be real. But at this point, the lesser of the evils is absolutely taking Eli to his baseball evaluations because the alternative is to stay home with the just beginning to vomit child. And I know there's more to come. And with the friend who is going to be working on electrical things, and if there are questions, I will not be able to answer them. So I know I am out of my league if I remain home. So instead, I tell Brandon I am taking Eli, I gather Eli, and away we go to baseball evaluations where I am able to take some deep breaths. I don't know what occurred here at home, but I did have a moment to breathe and, and just relax a little in the two hours that we were at evaluations, and I was thankful for it. How did things go here at home? It, well, it all went well. He's... Well, he's a... 
Is he an electrical engineer? I think he's an electrical engineer. Yeah. Well, he's retired now, but... Yeah. He's retired. He worked at mill, some paper mills around here. But anyway, he's an electrical engineer, and I know car electricity and not house electricity. So, he was here to help, and I just... Anyway, I needed help not to get into the specifics of it. So, he was up there with his friend figuring that out, and I was going back and forth between the bath and the... Electrical situation? Yeah, and turning breakers on and off, and downstairs in the garage, which is like a... <laughs> Feels quarter like a mile half walk. a mile trip. <laughs> <laughs> but, anyway. So, anyway, it will be the end of all of Polly. Uh-uh. Anyway, the end of all of that is that the electrical issue was figured out and we are all on the mend. Yeah, we have the all had the passes. stomach bug and we are on the mend. And the other really beautiful thing that occurred here that is just pure coincidence is that Charlie and Colin have birthdays that are nine days apart. And somehow, her birthday occurred this past weekend. Collins is about to occur this weekend. And somehow, no one was sick or will be sick on either of their birthdays. Nobody was sick on Charlie's birthday and nobody will be sick on Collins' birthday because we've all had it. So that is a miracle in and of itself. And in our efforts to be thankful for whatever small amount of things that we can be thankful for, that is one of them. It's kind of incredible that that worked out, isn't it? Had you thought about that? I was talking to my grandmother today and I that just kind of hit me and I was like, wow, that was lucky. So, we've survived the stomach bug of 2023. It was more than 24 hours. It was. It was definitely a more intense stomach bug than those that we've had in past years. It's actually been a couple of years since we've had a stomach bug in this house because with COVID and the pandemic, <clears throat> excuse me, the pandemic, um, there just wasn't as much sickness going around and we were able to avoid it for a couple of winters. So I think this was Colin's first time throwing up since he was quite young. Yeah, the time before that was when we were both sick at the same time. Mm. That was miserable. That is, that's another thing to be thankful for. We that did have some awful. overlap, but we were not both dying sick at the same time that has happened in the past and it's just it's like what do you do you turn the tv on and let it babysit your kids and hope that they hope you don't die in the process right i'm yeah this was not quite that bad because he he was probably least affected and he was several hours ahead of me so Let's put the sickness behind us because I feel like we started the Brittany and Brandon show and every single week we've talked about sickness. And we really are not typically a sick family, so I'm hoping this is going to be the end of it. Dogs, stop. Yeah, we have pretty good immune systems considering Collins and daycare. Hey, stop it. Charlie's in one school, you're in another school, I'm in another school. Yeah, Eli and I are in the same school, Charlie and Colin are in the same school, but Colin's still part-time in daycare, and Brandon works at an entirely different school. So we are bringing germs from all over. So our immune systems really are pretty good, but this stomach bug just, it got us. It's going around. Yep, it definitely is going around, unfortunately. The next thing that we're going to talk about is a little something that we do as a family. And we try to do this every weekend, typically on Sundays. We call it our Family Adventure Day. And our goal on Family Adventure Day is to visit a location here in the state of Maine where we live. And uh, Sometimes it's not in the state. Sometimes it's not in the state of Maine, that's true. Right now during the school year, we pretty much keep it to the state of Maine, though we have left Maine a couple of times for a few a few of our adventures and I think over the summer months we'll probably venture into New Hampshire Massachusetts those areas a little bit more than we have so far but for now we typically focus on Maine and we also strive for activities that don't have a cost associated with them 
just because in an effort to make memories for our family, we want to be cost effective about that. We are working on house projects and of course have other bills as does everyone. So when we can make memories and have fun and spend time together and not spend a ton of money, that is the epitome of a win. So we are typically looking for locations like lighthouses here in Maine or forts or where else have we gone? Mountains. Oh yeah, we do a lot of hiking at different mountains, state parks, which does have a cost, but we typically purchase a state park pass when we get our taxes because you know they make it really easy to just click spend half my return on that. And it's like a hundred dollars, isn't it? Well, when you're, you're we're talking state return. Oh. It's okay. Yeah, we don't fair usually enough. get yeah. much back from the state of Maine. Anyway. Um so we typically have that so it doesn't feel like a cost because we spend the money once and then we have it all summer well and into the winter as well so those are some of the locations we're usually aiming for and like i said there are not often costs associated and it's just a really beautiful opportunity for us to be together to show our children areas in our state that they haven't seen yet and to visit places that we often haven't seen either or that we haven't been to in years so this weekend, our goal, though it is a busy weekend with a holiday, with a birthday, we are still aiming, I think tomorrow, which is a Saturday, we are filming on Friday night. We typically, like I said, save our family adventure days for Sunday, but that is a holiday and a birthday. So we are looking at tomorrow and our family adventure this weekend is going to be visiting the Rockland Breakwater Lighthouse, as well as the Lighthouse Museum, which is around that area, and Owl's Head Lighthouse. These three locations are within a half an hour of each other, and they are, uh, they're like an hour and a half from our home. So when we are traveling over an hour from our home, we like to combine a couple of events if possible. And it is one of our bucket list goals to visit every lighthouse in the state of Maine. We don't have a time frame of when we're looking to have accomplished that. It's just kind of an open-ended bucket list goal, family bucket list goal. So looks like we could get two checked off this weekend. What do you think of our family adventure days? I like them. I like hiking. I like them but too. I don't like driving. The driving is not always ideal, but we are really fortunate that we live in more of the central Maine location and we have a lot around us. All the lighthouses are on the coast. This is true. But some people are hours from a lighthouse. <laughs> My favorite adventures are when you could just leave out the back door and go walk in the woods. Those are nice adventures too. But if you were interested in any of these family adventures that we have taken over this past year or so, a lot of them are up on the Bees Business YouTube channel so that you can check them out and see if they're a good fit for your family too. An upcoming event that I'm sure we'll talk more about in our next episode after it has already happened is a career fair at the school where I work this coming Monday. Brandon is going to join the career fair and many of my students are quite excited they, they do. They, they like Mr. B shirt, as we refer to him in the classroom, but Hank and Holly, you're being rude. Excuse me. So my students are excited about Mr. B shirt being involved in the career fair, but more than that, what do you think they're excited about? Stuff I'm bringing. Absolutely the stuff he's bringing. So Brandon, share. What are you bringing to the career fair? So... What was I? What was the original requirement? Not requirement. Suggestion. Oh, the original suggestion was to create a trifold about the company that you work at. And oh yeah, trifold, and you have a table in the gym. Yep, trifold on a table. So I'm bringing prizes. a car. I don't like your car. Mr. Bouchard and said, "Heck with the trifold." Well, my boss said, "Heck with the trifold." That's true. He did. But anyway, so. Brandon wasn't into the trifle I, anyway. So, yeah. So, <laughs> I work at a community college in an automotive program. So, we have a lot of new cars. Not new cars. Like, student cars for students to work on. And we recently got 
a Mustang Mach E. So. But wait, for those of you that don't know what a Mustang Mach E is, it's an electric is, Mustang. Is it the first electric Mustang? Yeah. Well, the fact that that's gonna cause a whole other debate. But anyway, some people are very upset that it's called a Mustang because it's really more like an all-wheel drive SUV. <laughs> but it does have what is it called? Right. <laughs> What is it when it makes the noise? Oh, when it makes the fake engine noise? Yeah. It's called unbridle. Unbridle. So it can make fake engine noises. Yeah, please. Like Tesla's do, do I think. So like anyway. three different settings where you can unbridle, which is the noisiest. Whisper is the quietest. And what was the middle one? No, whisper. Whisper is the middle and silence. The... No. Uh, anyway. Anyway, there's three noise settings. So you can make it sound yeah. like... A traditional car anyway. if you'd like. So I'm bringing that and a bunch of a TV to that play a video run, on a loop. That can be run from oh, the yeah. car. Well, I ended up bringing an extension cord. Just in case, or? No, nope. we all assumed it had it, but apparently this model, this does not have the plug. <laughs> it doesn't have the inverter. Lies. Sad. So I brought an extension cord. All right. Anyway. Well, some <laughs> some Mustang Mach-E's. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so could run a TV. Uh, bringing that and a TV and like a section of the battery and various other. A few things. little prizes. Yeah. So the kids are very excited to see this electric Mustang because, I mean, imagine being a child and getting to see an electric Mustang. I get to Mustang. go sit in it and touch it. Cool. I mean, I found it cool. It's sitting in my garage right now and I feel cool because it's in my garage. I don't own it. Probably will never it's cool own that it. It's an electric. But I feel cool. So I can imagine that. The kids at school will feel cool as well. And I'm glad that they will get this opportunity. I think that it's also a really good opportunity to share more about community colleges in general because the idea behind this career fair is exposing our students to possible careers that they could be involved in when they're older. And this was not something that I had growing up and I was telling my students that and I just didn't, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew that I wanted to be involved with children, but I thought I wanted to be a pediatrician. And I started off my college career in a major that was going to lead me to becoming a pediatrician. And it was about a semester. I forgot in. about that, that you actually started with that. Mm, it was about a semester in huh. when I thought, this isn't what I want because I began to realize that by being a pediatrician, I was gonna see children perhaps as little as once a year for annual visits or occasionally in between the yearly visits for sick visits. And I wasn't going to build the lasting, consistent relationship that I was looking for. And... You didn't want to go to school for 30 years. And Brandon and I were already engaged at this point and I also knew that I wanted to start a family pretty young and the idea of spending however many years it was going to take me to become a pediatrician in school didn't seem like the greatest way to start a family. So for all of those reasons combined, I ended up switching majors to elementary education and that is how I became a teacher. But I was sharing this with my students as a way to kind of help them realize that this is a great opportunity to just have an idea of the different professions that exist out there. And also, as I was getting to another added bonus I think is just exposing students to community colleges in general and that they can be a great option for students and I think in the past there was kind of a stigma around community colleges and them being looked down on I think that that stigma is working its way out and for that I am thankful so I think it's Especially, a who knows how long that free tuition is gonna be in Maine yeah I keep saying they're gonna extend it currently in Maine what is the years? Was it based on 19, years? 19, 20, 21, and 22. So any graduating senior from High 2000, school. yes, from 2019, 20, 21, or 22 currently can go to 
a two-year program at a community college for free. No, oh, and I mean, it, we're not at the two-year mark yet, but they can go. It's free tuition, Oh, period. Free tuition, period. Go to school for the rest of your life, I guess. That's cool. So it's a great opportunity. But they're talking about extending it, too. Extending it. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. that our kids, our kids could go anyway. But. Yes, our children have an advantage if they choose to go to the community college where he works. Because he works there, they get free tuition, so. You could too. Oh, I could get free tuition there too. That is cool. I do like to take classes and continue to learn. So yeah, that's coming up on Monday. We're looking forward to that. The kids at school are looking forward to that. And it will be exciting. <laughs> Brandon and I are going to share a fun fact about each of us. Do you think mine's going to be better than yours? Maybe. What's yours? Well, you're going to have to wait and listen. Tony, no. A fun fact about me that you may not already know, the birth of the bees business actually originated from a class that I took this past summer. So I need, as a teacher, if you're not aware, teachers need a certain amount of credits or contact hours to qualify for recertification. And for me, that's happening not this summer, but next summer. And I just wanted to be ahead of the situation. I didn't want it to sneak up on me and then for me to be feeling like, oh, I, in July, I need to be ready for recertification and I have two classes I need to take or something of that nature. I prefer to just take a couple classes versus count all my contact hours. You get contact hours when you do certain trainings within the district, but I like to take classes every now and again, so that's a fine way for me to just um, meet those requirements. So this past summer I took two classes, the first of which was an introduction to iMovie, using iMovie in education class, and it was in that class where I just started dabbling in iMovie a little bit more. I used it infrequently, but this class obviously required me to use it every single assignment. And that just forced me to dabble in it more, to step outside of my comfort zone. And at the end of all of this, I felt really confident about iMovie and using iMovie and really actually found it fun. And on my final assignment that I turned in, my professor said at the very end, when he had left me a nice big long comment at the very end, he said, and a YouTube star is born. Because in my final assignment, I had shared that I've spent years thinking about creating a, a YouTube channel and just had never found the courage to actually go for it. And so that is why he left that comment at the end. And that comment was the catalyst for me to hit publish on my YouTube channel, The Bees Business. So that's how it came about. Have you, would you say you have reached stardom yet? Stardom. Mm -hmm. My own version of stardom, perhaps. I, I have some goals for where I would like to see the bees business by the end of this year. And I think I, my two goals are, one, to hit a million views. We are on track to do that. I foresee that one happening. And my other goal is to hit 10,000 subscribers. I'm not sure that one's going to happen. It's really hard to get people to hit that subscribe button. So if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed yet, please help me reach my goal. <laughs> hit subscribe. Thanks. <laughs> that was a little bit of a shameless plug. On to your fun fact. Shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> um, so before I was a instructor and a full-time Grease Monkey, I have danced for... How long? I thought it was eight years. Eight years. I started when I was ten, so yeah, eight years. Eight years. That's where I met this one. Actually, it's not. When we were aware of each <laughs> other. So we'll share this story in a, a different episode, I'm sure, but... Technically, we met in preschool, and I have I have vivid memories of kissing him on the cheek in the sandbox. Yeah, but then how many years went by after that? A lot of years. Sixteen went by. years went by. We had no contact or communication with each other. Didn't know. Didn't remember each other's existence, and then we reconnected at dance class. 
you can't say you remember kissing me on the cheek and then say we forgot about each other. I remember kissing you on the cheek and then for many years I forgot about you. I also remember climbing the fence. He left early one day and I vividly remember climbing the fence that enclosed the playground area and trying to get to him. I got in trouble for that. I think it's my glasses that make me look grumpy. <laughs> yeah, so that was a fun fact. He did tap dance. What, do you want to share why you were called to tap dance? To meet girls? No. Oh. To find my future wife. No, it was <laughs> my sister started a, a year before I did. My little sister started a year-ish before I did. And I thought it was cool. So then I did it. He also had a surgery when you were 14. Yes, that when, sounds right. When he was 14. He had previously played football, but after having this surgery, which was in his stomach region, he could not play any contact sports. So that is kind of how dance fell onto his radar. Yep. That and his sister doing dance. Well, those are some fun facts. Are you making fun of me? No, never. No, never, he says. That's, that's something in our marriage that is a regular occurrence. A little bit of poking fun at each other. Keeps things lively and lighthearted. Yeah. I will say... You say it's lighthearted now. She beats me. You're going to get us demonetized for saying that I beat you. She does not beat me. I'm kidding. <sighs> I don't even remember what I was going to say now. And with all of that, this is going to be the conclusion of episode three of The Brittany and Brandon Show. We're cutting it a little bit short tonight compared to our last couple of episodes because we are tired. A week full of sickness has definitely taken out of us, taken, taken it out of us. We won't talk about anyone being sick. I really hope that that is accurate. I can't imagine how it's we would. It's warm. It is. It's sunny. We're supposed to hit the 70s, like the mid-70s next week here in Maine. It's going to be fantastic. Which, mid-70s in April in Maine, that is cause for celebration. Yeah. No long winter. Hmm. All right, so do your thing. Like this video if you haven't already. If you didn't know, it does really help the content creators that you enjoy, whether that's us or others, like those videos. Also subscribe if you haven't already. We would love to have you stick around here with us. We put out a new episode of the Brittany and Brandon show every Friday night, and it is set as a premiere. And if you didn't know, during a premiere, you are able to interact with us in live time. So you can leave comments and we can respond and that sort of thing. And another way to really help out our channel is to share this with anyone that you feel might also enjoy the Brittany and Brandon show or any of the other content here at the Bees Business. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We can't wait to see you in the next one. Oh, wait. Oh. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. You're welcome. What? <laughs> you... Okay. Why? Episode Why three is not going to be where he gets it. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Oh wait, I didn't say all my part. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We can't wait to see you. Again. No. 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 <laughs> we can't no, wait. No, wait. Wait. I've already said it. <laughs> I didn't. Yes, I did. I said it and then I went, oh, because you're supposed oh. to say part of it. We can't wait to see you. Uh, uh, next time. No. <laughs> In... Or just say the whole thing. In the next one. In the next. Uh, you should have <laughs> said something different. We gotta change that. No, we're not changing it. I say that in, in the my, next one. I say that in my outro of all of my vlogs here on this channel. We can't wait to see you. In the next one. Bye. You're a bit of a creep. <laughs> How can you not remember that? <laughs> You're four? like. Thank you. <laughs>
<laughs> is episode four going to be where you finally get I it together? I don't know, Brittany. It's just not natural. Like, you should have found something different to say. How is it not natural? Oh my god. Can't wait to see you. In the next one. In How is that not one, natural? The next time. Again. Like. That's not something I would say. Side note. If you have any questions that you would like us to answer in future episodes of the Brittany and Brandon show, please be sure to leave them in the comments. I'm not wearing pants. <laughs> Brandon! <laughs> yeah, you kind of like, you furrow, and I talked to you about how you need to not furrow. Surprised! My glasses. Furrowing. Surprised! I can't help Furrowing. that I have a caveman for It doesn't not. work with my beard. I haven't done that though. Because you don't get the... It's just like a pillow on my face. <laughs> no, it's not a piranha, but with the light above its head. Yeah. That's a deep water fish. Piranhas is. live in... I know it's not a piranha. They don't even live in Brandon. salt water, do they? I don't know. I think piranhas are freshwater river fish. I don't have a lot of piranha facts stored in my brain. Or, oh, angler fish. That's what the ones with the light is. Do you mm. like my reenactment of that fish? Do I look like an angler fish? Okay, you need a bigger underbite. Oh, I need to get my whole angler. need a bigger fish. underbite. <laughs> Wasn't it? Mm, just a couple seconds of that will do.